Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing the forensics of performing a retrofit on a Gerber Sabre 404 CNC router. Now, many of you know Gerber. It's a much older router, uh, really beefy platform, actually pretty well designed. There are some issues with proprietary designs that we'll cover in this video, but I want to just give you a breakdown of why I'm going to start doing videos like this is because I really feel there's a lot of food for thought in anybody out there who wants to perform a retrofit and is dealing with a lot of these weird proprietary type components. A lot of the engineering doesn't always make a lot of sense, especially with what we have available today. And again, we want to keep things simple, keep it on a budget, and again, get that machine up and running as fast as possible and as proficiently as possible. So I feel these videos are pretty much imperative. So We'll, we'll play Quincy on this and go in and do more or less uh, an autopsy on what we're working with here. I had the client forward me over a slideshow of the actual retrofit process. Now, just to give you guys an idea of timeline, you're looking at about a three-week timeline and going getting pictures, uh, putting the ideas together. So once again, if it saves you two weeks, I did my job, and I feel that that's really where I want to go with this. Anytime it saves you and any thought process it saves you, it's well worth the watch. So first image we have here is I always want my clients or potential clients to send me what I'm working with because, of course, I'm not there with you. Um, he sent me over some beautiful HD images. Uh, this is one of the most unique mounting platforms I've seen. Most motor mounts are standoff type platforms. This particular unit, it's a plate. And on this plate, I will always ask um, that you guys give me feedback on what motor I'm working with as far as size. There's NEMA 23, NEMA 34, and NEMA 42. There are larger size motors, but typically these are the majority of the sizes we'll be working with. In this particular instance, uh, the bolt pattern was a NEMA 23 motor. You can always confirm that by any writing on the motor if you guys have it. If you don't, uh, take the measurements, send them to me. I do have a diagram that has a breakdown of the measurements so that we can go through and actually make sure that uh, we give you the right proper motor to do the retrofit with. Hopefully we don't have to change the size out, which in this case we were hoping we didn't have to do. So right now what we see here is that not only is this a NEMA 23 motor, but it's also utilizing a round geometry where NEMA 23, as many of you already know, do come in round platforms and also come in rectangular, which is more common. Um, older type systems usually went with the rounder type motors. Uh, again, it's just it's just a, the more the preference of what was available at that time. Um, overall, it doesn't matter as long as the mounting platform is there. The one thing that does matter other than the mounting platform is the length of the motor. Now, many of you will run into space constraints no different than my client did with this particular platform. Um, this particular pulley, and this is what's most unique about this system, is that the pulley that runs the transmission on this system, we all know that they need extra special care as far as how they're set up so we don't have excess lateral torque put on these actual uh, motor shafts. Uh, this pulley system is 11 mil. It's also held on, you can see here this black collar is a steel locking collar, and the pulley itself has a lip. And that lip comes up with stress relief cuts. There's four of them. And this locking collar actually compresses this softer aluminum here around the shaft, locking the pulley in place. Now, I know many of you may be laughing at this because I know the engineering here is really, it just shows you the time frame we're dealing with. And also, you know, the company platform as far as making things proprietary and trying to make things as difficult as possible for others to reverse engineer or come up with their own mounting procedure. So I'm going to show you now step by step of what we're actually working with. Here's the actual pulley. You can see what I'm talking about with this articulated lip. They just drew out the pulley here. Uh, again, this is all bored out for the shaft. You can see the stress relief where the, the actual uh, clamping lock collar goes on and locks it to the shaft. Here's a vertical image. Once again, you can see the client took his time, took real clear Im images. That always helps me, guys. I'm not there with you. The better the image is, uh, the more I can do. A video is, is super helpful just as well. Um, but you can see here, once again, what we're working with. Shaft goes in the center, real simple. One, two, three, four stress relief cuts. You got the flange and aluminum that then compresses over the shaft, collar goes over it. Stock motor with the pulley on, no locking collar. Here's the collar. Okay. So 
Our main dilemma, here's the finished product with the collar on, that locks the pulley on, here's the stock motor. Now, our main dilemma is the fact that we can't use a NEMA 34 motor because that would be the easiest solution. If we use a NEMA 34 motor, we could do that. I can have it made with an 11 mil shaft. The problem is the dimensions and length of the NEMA 34 do not provide enough clearance for those mounting plates to mount back onto the chassis. So either the client's got to work with the mounting plates or we figure out another solution. In which case, we all know opening a hole up is a lot easier on a pulley than increasing shaft size typically. That being said, there are unique instances, and this is one unique instance that I want to show you guys is very possible to be done, and many of you may or may not know this, but what I came up with here, you can see my NEMA 23 600 ounces mounted perfectly in his actual uh, mounting plate, and you can see what we've got here is a 303 stainless coupler, internal bore di dimension is quarter inch, and external bore dimension or external uh, dimension is half inch. Okay, now his pulley is 11 millimeter in diameter, internal diameter. So we know that after, con after discussing with the client, he had enough clearance to open it up another, you know, basically 1.7 mil to half inch. If he does that, we've just adapted that quarter inch motor shaft to half inch using that stainless coupler. Okay, it is a rigid coupler. We all know how hard stainless is. So let me show you the finished product. Okay. What I had the client do, drill and tap the actual pulley in the middle. Again, this will not affect your belt at all because as long as he deburred this, you're good. Um, this was he was in the process of doing. He did remove the flange. Uh, once again, slides directly on the shaft. Set screw locks the pulley in place. Again, there's not much actual force on these pulleys. Again, the whole thing about a, a system that utilizes a belt-driven system is smoothness of engagement. And that smoothness is usually dictated by uh, slight tension on the shaft. But anything more than slight tension, you're really, really just going to degrade belt life and, again, put excess stress on your mechanics and also, of course, the motor. Um, but he took his time. He did it right. You can see exactly what we've got here. With the set screw in place, you're fine. That's going to lock right onto that 303 stainless rigid coupler underneath, and he's golden. And now he just performed a retrofit. The machine's up in action. He's already done access calibration and confirmed the system is running fine. So, again, these are the type of unique options, so to speak, that, you know, performing a retrofit you may run into. There's ways out there using common parts. Many of you um, will see, you know, you'll get kind of uh, long-winded, so to speak, and in, in looking at all the, there's so many plethoras of parts out there as far as what we have available now with bearings and couplers and, you know, what types, what types of metal to use. Those kind of questions are always going to come up, but again, Looking at this platform and showing you guys how this is done, this is going to, like I said, get the wheels turning, and you guys will look at your machines, and hopefully it'll it'll breed new light into what you guys have actually gone through. Because I know for a fact, a lot of times I get stumped. I'll look at these older machines and be like, "What the hell were they thinking?" You know, and a lot of times, even with this, I said that to them with their first contraption, the way they had this mounted. This is a very simple platform, can be utilized on a lot of different systems if you guys are using pulleys. Um, ball screws, you could use that same platform. Let me show you something. If required, oops, wrong picture, excuse me. Um, you can use this same platform if you required a larger shaft to actually engage a larger coupler. Okay, there are times that may be necessary. This method will work fine. Again, your lateral torque will not be uh, really huge on the shaft at all because, again, we're looking at the diameter of this is only half inch from quarter inch, so you're not looking at, you know, a huge perspective in radius torque. So, and again, you're not pulling on anything like a pulley does where we actually have a belt coming around this and then coming up and you're putting all that horizontal tension. Ball screws are much easier to do a conversion like this if you needed a coupler to be sized correctly. Sometimes using a rigid aspect coupler like this works extremely well. In this case, it did. So, again, you got multiple platforms that you can use this option on. But if it saves you guys some time and money, it's definitely worth showing you. You can see here the finished product. He did have the motor mounted. There's a plate. Pro Sodalus connector inbound. He's good. And you're ready to go. 
So again, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful. I'm going to continue this process because I think it's a really just a cool idea. I've never seen things done like this. Um, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos on retrofits, but I want to just throw ideas back and forth as far as the engineering side to you know get these older machines up and making them more reliable and bringing them up to date. And again, I know there's a lot to be learned here, so I hope many of you did learn something from this. If you guys do have any questions or request quotes, um, please contact me direct at my email, storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also go direct to my eBay store, eDealers Direct. I'll put a link in the description. Um, to all my subscribers, once again, guys, I love you. Um, I really appreciate all the support. You guys have been wonderful. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.